Hi, I'm Brenton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get into med school and other professional programs. Today, we're going to talk about the adaptive immune system. This is a distinct branch of the immune system. The other branch is the innate immune system, which is the first line of defense against pathogens and provides a rapid, nonspecific response. It is made up of physical and chemical barriers, such as the skin and mucus, as well as cells like neutrophils, macrophages, and natural killer cells. These cells and barriers can recognize and respond to a wide range of pathogens, but the response is not specific to a particular pathogen. The adaptive immune system, however, is responsible for providing specific and long-lasting immunity against pathogens. It is activated when the innate immune system is unable to clear an infection. Cytotoxic immunity is one of the two main branches of the adaptive immune system, the other being humoral immunity. Cytotoxic immunity is mediated by T lymphocytes, known as T cells. There are two main types of T cells, CD4 plus or T helper cells, and CD8 plus or cytotoxic cells. CD4 plus T helper cells coordinate the immune system by releasing cytokines and activating other immune cells, such as macrophages and B lymphocytes. They also play a role in the regulation of immune responses by differentiating into different subsets of T helper cells. CD8 plus cytotoxic T lymphocytes directly target and eliminate infected cells by releasing cytotoxic molecules and triggering apoptosis, a process of programmed cell death. You can think about the difference as CD4 plus cells indirectly help eliminate an infection, whereas CD8 plus cells directly are responsible for killing pathogens. Now let's take a look at B cells. The main function of B cells that you need to understand for the MCAT are that they make antibodies. They make antibodies and the antibodies in turn help mark pathogens for destruction. Let's take a closer look at antibodies. Antibodies are produced by plasma cells, which are activated by the previously named B cells. Antibodies target an antigen, which is essentially a protein or a part of a protein being presented by cells on the cell surface. Antibodies contain two heavy chains and two light chains. You can see the heavy chains here in dark blue as the longer part or the heavier part, and the light chains are these two outer smaller pieces of the antibody. As you can see, a disulfide bond links the light and heavy chains together, and both the light and heavy chain have what is called a variable portion or a variable region on, or a variable region on the top. This pink or purple variable region is what is actually binding to the cells, binding to the proteins, and causing that immune response. The variable region is the tip of the antibody, and this is the part that actually binds to the antigens. Another important aspect of antibodies you will want to be familiar with is their ability to undergo hypermutation. This means that the variable region on the antibodies change all the time and are able to bind to multiple different parts of a microbe. When the antibodies bind, they mark the target pathogen for destruction. This binding is called opsonization. Eventually, if enough opsonization occurs, the pathogens will then clump together and form insoluble complexes. This process is called agulation, and it can be seen here. So in the first figure, we see the antibodies marked A here in blue and the pathogens here in red B. We begin the process of opsonization, where the antibodies start binding to different proteins on the cell surface. Eventually, we see that the entire surface becomes covered in these antibodies. Now, 2C is when we actually begin seeing agulation, where multiple of the pathogens are coming together, clumping, while being bound together by many different antibodies. This 2C complex will then form something that is insoluble and come out of the bloodstream or whatever fluid it is dissolved in. Another option, as you can see down in the third slide, is that the antibodies will trigger a macrophage to consume the pathogen and ultimately destroy it inside of the cell. We'll talk more about this in the next video. The adaptive immune system also has memory, meaning that after an initial infection, the immune system will remember how to recognize and eliminate the pathogen if it encounters it again. This is achieved by the formation of long-lived T cells and B cells, which are able to mount a much faster and stronger response upon re-exposure to the same pathogen. Thank you so much for watching our video on the adaptive immune system, and I'll see you next time.